Having good movement is an important skill to have in Fortnite, but what actually makes good movement? You hear it all the time, this guy has crazy movement. What's crazy about it? In this video, I'm gonna break down what that good movement actually is and how you can get it yourself. The first and one of the most important pieces of movement is when you're taking your peaks. So many people, including myself, when taking a peak shot, they'll just edit a right hand peak, but won't actually move to behind that peak. The gameplay you're seeing right now is from Raider's mechanical practice map. I'm doing the peak training part of the map. If you're not behind your peak while making an edit, the bot is gonna shoot you and you're gonna take damage. Similarly, if you don't reset your edit fast enough after taking the peak, you're gonna take more damage as well. Running this will help train you to always go behind that right hand peak when you set it up in game and also make it as good as possible so that you don't take damage. But yeah, the first and most important piece of movement is being able to move behind that right hand peak. Another really important important thing to notice about my movement in this course is that when I'm placing builds around the enemy, when I'm boxing the enemy, I'm not exposed, I'm not taking damage, and that's because I'm sitting behind my right hand peak while building. That's another piece of movement that is really difficult to master. This can be behind a window edit or behind a triangle edit. If you sit in the perfect position, you can build in the enemy's box without even being able to be shot. Now obviously this is on a target that doesn't move and it's a lot different in game, but this is a good stepping stone, practicing in this map. One other thing in this map that I really recommend is running the peace control tunnels. What this is, is a tunnel that you can edit course through and then there's targets throughout the course. Whenever you get to a target, make sure you set up a perfect right hand peak and peace control through a right hand peak like we were just talking about. I actually run this every single day and it helps me a lot with getting better movement, faster edits, building, everything. I definitely recommend. Another map that is really good practice for getting better movement is the 200 pump map. In this map, you can only kill people if you hit a perfect perfect 200 pump. This is mostly an aim training map, but you can also practice building around and stuff. But the main reason I say this is a good practice for movement is because you're usually going to just be in a 50-50, meaning you're gonna be in the opponent's box and whoever hits a max pump first is going to win. What you should practice in this map is bobbing and weaving after every single shot, making yourself hard to hit. Practice that 50-50 movement. If you're ever in an enemy's box in a real game, you're gonna wanna be able to make yourself hard to hit while also being able to hit the enemy. This is a great place to practice that, along with this map called Aim Duels or Raiders 1v1 Aim Trainer. In this map, you can hop in with a friend and practice 1v1 aim training in up close scenarios, far away, all these different aim drills. But once again, just like in that headshot only map, you can practice bobbing and weaving while hitting your shots. This is a good skill to have. A lot of people can only hit shots if they're like standing still. Like, you may notice yourself if you're new to the game focusing too much on your aiming that your movement is really easy to track and the enemy's gonna hit more shots on you. Versus if you can get good at bobbing and weaving, moving left and right while hitting your shots and like jumping up and down and still be able to hit your shots, you're gonna win more and more 50-50s. Now those are 1v1 maps where you need a teammate, but there's also a solo one that you can go in by yourself and go against AIs. I'll attach that code down below as well, it's just as good. So we've gone over movement in 50-50s, peaks, and while peace controlling. But one of the most impressive forms of movement comes from learning free builds. You know, stuff like being able to hit a side jump on a moment's notice, or cranking out a retake at the perfect moment in a fight. Being super comfortable in your building to be super flexible in fights, that's one of the most important things that makes a pro's movement. If you're looking for new build moves to practice, I have a ton on this channel and I'm gonna link some down below, from beginner to intermediate to advanced. If you're ever stuck in the game or just bored, don't know what to do, learn some new retakes because it helps you improve a ton. And then one of the last ways to improve your movement in the game is to do 1v1s. If you're looking for a routine to improve your movements and kind of just mechanics overall, you could go with what's in this video. Just go through all the maps in order. To end this video, I'm gonna break down a couple of movement tricks that I use in these fights against Ken Beans here. There's literally endless tricks to use with movement in fights, but I'll just break down a few right here. First off, being able to comfortably jump off a cone and edit up a lair at the same time is a really useful skill. You can quickly surprise somebody from above, just like I did there, if you can get this jump down consistently. Now this is why I said practicing the window peak in game is totally different than the practice map, because on a moving target, Target, it's a lot harder to get the angle you need. Ken hits me hard here by just having really unpredictable movement. Sometimes the better option, which I do at the end here, is just wait for the enemy to walk into the peak and then take your shot, rather than you walking into the peak, just like I did there. In fights, there's always going to be weird ways to take the most optimal peak possible, like this example here. The best way for me to get a shot and to avoid getting shot is 
by running back down the ramp while taking my shot here. The more 1v1s you do and the more fights you watch, the better you'll get at finding the best possible peak. Every fight is different and throws curveballs at you, which is why it's so important to practice. Another form of peaking that you need to get down is called counter peaking. Ken did it earlier when he was moving really unpredictable behind that window. I do it here behind a cone. So you can see Ken Beans edits in on me and as soon as he jumps in, I kind of crouch and walk backwards behind the cone. This is a really good strategy to make yourself harder to hit because less of yourself is visible. And then later when I jump back in his box, notice how when I'm taking my shot here, I'm jumping in the air at the same time. Super tough to hit. That's the moral of the story today. Another good movement skill to have is being able to move out of a box as fast as possible. I saw that Ken was jumping in here and I was one shot. So I quickly get out to the side and as soon as I'm out of the box, notice how I just flick my mouse into position to build a wall. I build behind myself first because that's the angle of danger and I ended up getting the kill. Here's another example of me finding a good peak in the middle of a fight. I get up players really quickly and then I have this wall and I use it as a right hand peak. As soon as I take the peak, I build a floor to block his potential shot. And then notice when I drop to pressure his wall, I don't drop directly on the wall. I move off to the side so that I can't get boxed. It's kind of a positioning trick more than a movement trick, but making sure that you don't position yourself in a bad place in a fight is crucial to not getting boxed. I do it again at the end of the fight here, positioning myself to the side of his box, and then I see him double editing up, and I just jump and take a peek shot. That kill came from good positioning throughout the fight. Now this was a sick movement play. Notice how this whole time while I'm pressuring him, I'm sticking towards the edges of the boxes. This made it so that I could jump off to the side really easily. If I was more in the center of the box pressuring, him, I wouldn't have been able to go for a play like this, but because I stuck to the outer edges of the box, I was able to like jump off to the side really quickly. It's kind of hard to explain some of these movement things. I hope you guys are getting it. Another major piece of movement that pros use is using their movement to exploit in. Here's a really good example. So I kind of pretend that I'm not going to pressure his wall anymore. I go up a layer, but I quickly jump in and I'm pressed right up against his wall immediately, shoot the wall, get in instantly. If when I jumped in, I wasn't pressed up right against his wall, the surprise attack wouldn't have worked. But because I moved so precisely to immediately get in, that's how I was able to get that play to work there. If you watch pros, all of their exploits like that are going to be so fast and so perfectly timed. And it's because of their really precise movement. This last clip here that we're going to break down is really good. If you watch it full speed, it almost looks like I'm applying those Raider piece control drills perfectly in this fight. But let's break it down. Right at the start, you can see that I'm pressed up against this wall with a ramp behind me. I quickly get out to the side before he's able to make an edit on me. Being able to move fast enough to get those quick escapes is really important. And then right after I get up layers, get this wall, and I see he's mantling up and get a quick shot behind a right hand peak. That was a really good sequence, but I clean up the fight later kind of sloppily, I'm not going to lie. I hope this video helped you guys out. More tutorials coming soon, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.